Okay, so we're going to look at a precedence table here and then we're going to turn it into a precedence network. So I've got here a, um, a procedure for making uh, tea and putting some biscuits out for a guest to give them some afternoon tea. So I have to go through this list and work out what things have previous steps as a prerequisite. Now, step A it doesn't have any prerequisites because uh, it is just the first thing we're going to do. Um, putting the tea bag in the cup, that doesn't have any prerequisites either. Pouring water in the cup. Now, putting the water in the cup, normally you would put it on top of the tea bag, so the tea bag's got to be in the cup, uh, and you've got to have boiled the kettle. So A and B would both be prerequisites for pouring the water in the cup. Adding the milk and sugar, your guest would rather the water was in first, so we'll say that it's got a prerequisite of C. Now, um, you could also say that they have to do A and B before they do D, but since A and B are prerequisites for C, we just put C there for D. We're really just looking at the immediate prerequisite for it. Opening the biscuits. Now, opening the biscuits doesn't rely on any of those previous things, so again, I just put a dash for that one. Putting the biscuits on a plate, that would re rely on me opening the packet first. And then serving the guest, I need to have everything else done to do that, don't I? So I need to have D, which was adding the milk and sugar to the tea, and E, putting the biscuits on the plate. So that's a precedence table which shows what um, different parts of the, this procedure rely on previous parts. Now I'm going to translate that into a network. So I'm going to start from a point over on the left of, this, of the page and I'll label that as start. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw um, lines uh, to a node, basically. So if you remember that from doing other stuff with networks, A is going to go across here like this, draw an arrow on the end and label it. A and B are both required before we can do C. So I'm going to draw them in like this and they go to a point where C starts. C goes along like this. Now, was C a prerequisite for anything? Uh, sorry, C is a prerequisite for D. So I'm going to go across here to D. And then what am I going to do? Okay, let's have a look at this. Opening the biscuits, that didn't have any of this as a prerequisite, so that actually starts back here as well. E comes from here. And E is going to join on to F. And, oops, I made a mistake here, didn't I? This should be F. Put that there like that. Uh, e is going to join on to F. So this is E. Now D and F both are required for serving the guest, which is G. So F is going to have to come to join that one. And then we've got G across here. And that leads us to a finish point. Okay, so that's how I would draw a precedence network. Now, it's possible that you could draw this in a different way. You could have E and F going above the A, for example. And you'll find that if you look at your answer in the back of the book, it might look a bit different from yours. I tend to draw mine with curves. A lot of theirs are more angular. So either way, it doesn't really matter. As long as you're clear and you're clearly showing the arrow is going, uh, showing which way the flow of, um, of the procedure is going. Now, as well as having prerequisites, a lot of things take various amounts of time. So let's say it takes 120 seconds to boil the kettle. Maybe putting a tea bag in a cup takes 20 seconds by the time I get it out of the container. Pouring water into the cup might only take 10 seconds. Adding milk and sugar, maybe that actually takes me 30 seconds because I've got to get it out of the fridge. Uh, opening the packet of biscuits, okay, so I grab a packet of biscuits and open it up. Maybe that takes 20 seconds, depends how tough it is to get into the plastic. Putting the biscuits on the plate, 10 seconds and actually serving the guest, maybe it only takes 30 seconds to carry them both over to the table. So these are just made up numbers, but it gives you an idea. 
So I can then put that information onto my um, network as well. That takes two minutes. C takes 10. E takes 20. 10. 20. 10. And 30. Now we can do something which is called finding the critical path. And the critical path is what is actually going to... It's really looking at what's going to hold us up. It's working out how long things are going to take if everything goes well. Now, if I look at different ways of getting from the start to the finish, if I go along the bottom line, along E, F, G, that would be 20 plus 10 plus 30, which would be one minute. If I went through C... Oh, I've drawn this wrong, haven't I? That should be a B. Really made a mess of this, haven't I? That's a B there. Hopefully you were wondering what I was doing. There we go. Oh. Uh. And that's 20 B. There we go. All right. Hopefully you were looking at that going, what is he doing? That doesn't make any sense. And now you're going, aha, that makes sense. So, as I was saying, if we were to go through B and then C, D and G, it would be 20 plus 10 plus 20 plus 30, which would be 1 minute and 20 seconds. And if we go through A, it's 120 plus 10 plus 20 plus 30, and that would come out to 3 minutes. Now, so the critical path then is... Uh, the one that's taking the longest, and the longest is to go through A. The critical path is A, C, D, G, which is a three-minute pathway. And what that is, is that's the best possible time we could do it, and that's the, the quickest we can do it. Um, we can't make the kettle go any faster, so it is going to take two minutes to do, and then the other things happen after it. Um, it, what it means is that if we were trying to improve this process, we would look at that critical path and we'd try to shorten parts of that critical path. Maybe we can get a, a better kettle, for example, that boils the water quicker. And then we look at, um, if we looked at like the EFG line, like the, the, that's uh, got, uh, that took a minute, okay, to, to get from one end to the other. So you could imagine that if this was... Um, a production line instead of just making a cup of tea, you could that look at that part of the process and go, well, there's lots of slack time there where no one's doing anything. So maybe um, we could introduce something else for them to do during that time. Okay. In this example, obviously, maybe uh, while you're getting the biscuits ready, you, you know, you've got the biscuits ready, maybe you could, um, I don't know, wipe down the bench top or something like that as well. Okay. So that will help you to do um, 12A, one from the Hazy Textbook.